So we're here to talk about the third commandment. Let me read it to you. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not despise preaching and his word, but hold it sacred and gladly hear and learn it. Where does the Sabbath day come from? Well, it comes from the beginning when God created everything. After six days of working to create the entire universe, you included, he rested on the seventh day. He took this time to rest. Well, God didn't just create humans to sit and rest the whole time. He gave us a job to do, to tend the garden. That's what he commanded Adam and Eve to do. He, tend, he told them to tend the garden. But on the seventh day, they too would rest. God has always called his people to rest. We even see it in Adam and Eve's children, Cain and Abel. They put forward sacrifices. They were following this Sabbath day. They were remembering the Sabbath. The difference is Cain just wasn't really doing it with his whole heart. He wasn't gladly hearing and learning God's word. He wasn't holding it sacred. God calls us still today to remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy, to come and hear his word, to hold it sacred and gladly hear and learn it. But he also calls us to do it to find rest in him after our busy weeks to find rest, to sit at his feet and find rest. We see this example happening in Jesus too. In scripture, we see that Jesus often went away to rest, to pray and to rest. He was exhibiting signs of remembering the Sabbath, right? In fact, he often took time to be alone with God. He often took Sabbath time as well with other people, to be with God's people in the synagogue. And so actually, in Luke chapter 4, after Jesus was baptized, after he had been tempted in the wilderness, Jesus begins his ministry. And it says, he went through the surrounding country and he taught in their synagogues and he was glorified by all. He was going from synagogue to synagogue teaching. So Jesus was in worship. And it happened in Nazareth at his home church, if you will, his home synagogue, where he opens up the scripture, he opens up the scroll, and he reads from it, from a passage from Isaiah. And after he reads it, he says, today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. What he's saying is, this passage of scripture is talking about me. Jesus is showing us that God's word, the Bible, points us to him. And so that's one reason why we continue to worship today. Because when we go to worship and we hear God's word, we know that we're being pointed to Jesus. We're being directed to him, to our savior. We gladly remember the Sabbath day, going to worship, to hear God's word, to gladly hear and learn it, to hold it sacred. That's how we keep the third commandment. So Jesus worshiped, he went from synagogue to synagogue, and he called his disciples to come to worship after they had been out busy doing ministry, he called them away in Mark chapter 6 to a desolate place, it says, to find rest. He calls us today to come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, he says. He continues offering that Sabbath rest. And we do that by gathering with other Christians in worship still today. Now, many people say, well, I can worship God anywhere. I'm sure that's true, but do you? Do you worship God out in the forest? Do you worship God out on the golf course? Do you worship God when you're out in the middle of a lake when you're fishing? Those are usually the places that people say, I can go and worship God anywhere. Yeah, you can, but do you? The thing is, why would you go anywhere else but be in worship in church where God's people are called to gather? So Jesus promises to be in worship with us. He promises to be where two or three are gathered in his name. And that's exactly what we do in church on Sunday morning. We open up with the invocation, those words. It means to call upon God's name. We call upon God's name in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And we have the promise that he is there with us in that moment and throughout that worship. We have the promise that he is present for us 
in the words of absolution because it's not my words or Pastor Hinky's words or anyone else's words of forgiveness that you're hearing. You're hearing Jesus' words of forgiveness for you when we hear the words of absolution in worship. We are in God's presence when His Word is read from the Scriptures, when His Word is proclaimed from the preaching, from the sermon. We are in God's presence in baptism when there is a baptism taking place in the service and we see God is working through the water to claim that person as His own child. We see God at work in the Lord's Supper in worship, where Christ is giving His own body and blood in that moment, and where the Holy Spirit is bringing forgiveness through that bread and wine. And God is present through His people in worship as we join together, as we lift up one another in prayer. So why wouldn't we go to worship? But instead, let's remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Let us not despise His preaching and His word, but Hold it sacred, gladly hear and learn it. Let's pray. God, we thank you for the opportunities we have to worship you. Help us to not neglect these times or to despise these times, but to gladly go to worship, to be in your presence and in the presence of all of your people and to be shaped by your word. Be with us in Jesus' name, amen.